So let me make a file first. Okay, so let me share screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir, it's visible. All right, so let's move and we go to um, this mutability. Okay, so like second years, Say we second year class will do it in notability and I'll share the notes as we uh, kept on doing last time also. All right, and videos will also be uploaded in the YouTube channel. Okay. So maybe Do you think a dark background would be good? Will be helpful to your eyes? Or it is fine with white? Maybe is this okay for this? Anything is fine. Is this better? I couldn't, I couldn't hear you. I said anything is fine. Okay, anything is fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let me, maybe I'll, I'll just do with this dark background this time. All right. So this is lecture one. Okay, so we want to look at Rn, right? You have seen in R, seen Rn, right? In the context of vector space, right? Yes, sir. So Rn is a is a Vector space, space, right, of dimension. So what is the dimension? Estimate, oh, sorry, excuse. Yeah, so what is its dimension? N, right? So Rn is a vector space of dimension N. and basis standard basis standard basis as e1 e2 en right so ej is 0 0 0 uh, 1 at the jth position and then zero again. So this is jth position, right? Now what else do we know about Rn from your linear algebra?
Yeah, anything more? Do you know what is length of a vector? So vector space is just a space of vectors with certain properties. So do you know length of the vector, length of a vector in Rn? Uh, yes, yes, we can define a norm through the inner product. Oh, so you have, uh, you have done inner product? Uh, yes. Developers? Okay, very good. Very good. So inner product is an is a linear algebraic notion which will play a very important role. So let me recall. So, so inner product, so, so if A, A, let's say, A equal to A1, A2, AN in Rn, B equal to B1, B2, Bn in Rn, then the inner product, The standard inner product. There may be different inner product. Is defined as a one b one plus a and b n. Right. So this is the generalization. This is the generalization of dot product. This is the generalization of the dot product all right so 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 how did you define the inner product in your linear algebra course so did you define in full generality or you have seen this thing only Uh, I think we did the general case. Like uh, you have seen this one. Or no, no. I think we did the general case. General yeah. case. Okay. Okay. So very good. So you know uh, what? How all the inner products in R N looks like, right? Right. So this would be an interesting question for linear algebra. Uh, because in this course you will see a lot of applications from a linear algebra. So question is what are all the inner products? In Rn. Okay. So try to find, try to try to characterize in terms of the in terms of matrices. Okay, but this will be useful, this inner product. So, so once you have seen the inner product, so first of all, this is a vector space, then this is an inner product space. So in inner product space, in a inner product space, we have the notion of length of a vector. So therefore, for A in Rn, the length is length of A is defined as norm of A, which is square root of inner product with A with the, with itself. All right. So this is this is uh, this is the length with respect to length of A with respect to standard inner product. The 
standard inner product. Right? So if you change the inner product, the length will also change. So length depends on the inner product. Right. Let us work with the, with the standard inner product. So the next thing is, so you have seen then uh, cauchy swartz inequality. Have you seen it? Yes, sir. OK, very good. So, But it is very important. So let us, let us repeat it again. So cauchy swartz inequality. So for two vectors A, B in R N mod of the inner product A, B is less or equal to normal norm B. Do you remember how did you prove this one? There are several ways. But yeah, let me let me just give one. So suppose uh, let's say if any if a is zero or b is zero, then there's nothing to prove. Both side is zero. There's nothing to prove. Therefore, assume a not equal to 0 as well as and b not equal to 0, both of them non zero. So what you would like to do is, is, to, is to consider the following norm a by norm a minus this is this is this this is also called this is the norm of vector a so b by norm of b, b by norm b and you put it square so which means this is nothing but the inner product a by norm a minus b by norm b with itself a by norm a minus b by norm b all right. Now this one you can actually see that this part will be. So let us let us let me write this up. This is a one by. This, this will be the vector a one by norm of a minus b one by norm of b, comma. A two by norm of a minus b2 by norm of b and then a n by norm of a minus b n by norm of b. Similarly with uh, this one with itself a1 by norm of a minus b1 by norm of b a n by norm of a minus b n by norm of b this one and then you take another so which you which you get actually this summation j from 1 to n a1 by norm of a j by norm of a minus b j by norm of b square so this gives you j equal to 1 to n a j square by norm of a square minus 2 a j b j by norm of a norm of b minus b j square by norm of b square this is nothing but you see here summation j from 1 to n a j square 
by norm of a norm of a is independent of j uh, this is plus sign and minus 2 by norm of a norm of b summation a j b j j from 1 to n plus summation b j square j from 1 to n by norm of b square so this is nothing but norm of a, this square norm of a square by norm of a square minus 2 inner product a b by norm of a norm of b plus norm of b square by norm of b square all right so this goes this cancels so this means 2 minus 2 inner product a b norm of a norm b see this was a square one so look at what what did we consider we consider this one right now this one is 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 a positive is greater equal to zero because it's a norm so therefore this should be greater equal to zero which means norm of a b which should be less or equal to norm a norm b now you change now you consider so this is one now considering the following norm of a by norm a minus b by norm b not minus here plus square get or equal to zero we get minus of inner product so check this it's less or equal to norm a it's norm b the point is that this might not be positive if it is not positive this is positive so that's why you need to do this one also so combining one and two we get that mod of inner product a b is less or equal to norm a norm b all right this you have done so exercise discuss the cases where when the equality holds in Cauchy Swartz inequality. Okay. Uh, discuss the the cases as well as as well as the geometry what happens to the vector okay so this is an interesting exercise to do now let us see an application of uh, cauchy swartz inequality which will be very useful here for analysis so the triangle inequality So it says for any two vectors a b in r n norm of a plus b is less or equal to norm a plus norm b all right all right have you seen a proof of triangle inequality too
Yes. Have you seen a proof of triangular inequality also? Yes, sir. Hmm? I have seen. Okay, so you, you, was it done in class? No, sir. I'm a PhD scholar. Oh, you are a PhD scholar. Okay. So, what about uh, BSMS third years? Are you there? Sir, I think we saw a proof. Either in linear algebra class or in analysis class. I think we saw a proof of this. Analysis class in RN? Mm -hmm. I think uh, we saw a proof in RN as, uh, RN uh, in our second semester analysis class. Maybe. Uh, in third semester analysis class, maybe I think. Okay. I think we have seen a proof. Okay. We have seen a proof, but let us, uh, let me just, uh, since it was, it was not in the course definitely, but yeah, let me let me give briefly. So this proof is is very much uh, just using cauchy schwarz inequality. This is a very simple. So proof. So note a b slash or equal to mod a b, which is slash or equal to norm a norm b by cauchy search now this one we will consider a plus b square this is same as before so it will come as norm a square plus two inner product a b plus norm of b square which is less or equal to norm a square plus two mod a b norm b square. And this is by above this by cosy search two norm of a norm of b plus norm of b square. So which is nothing but norm of a plus norm of b is whole square. So this implies taking square root norm of a plus b is less or equal to norm a plus norm b for all a, b in r. Now again exercise. Uh, so when does the equality holds in the triangle inequality. Okay. All right. So now the triangle inequality give us uh, nice things. So let me let me recall. You might have seen what is called distance. So so distance in R n. The distance, the standard distance. between two points a b is defined as d a b is nothing but norm of a minus b right which is a1 minus b1 square a n minus b n square so for 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 a vector for two points see here we, we consider we have not considered here vector so here consider two points 
so here what we, we are doing is Let me move a little bit here. So here we uh, view Rn as point set, as a point set, right? So we, we till till triangle inequality, we we are viewing Rn as a vector space. But you can uh, consider Rn as a set, right? And in the set, one can one can define something called distance. So, so so a definition of distance, which you have seen. Let X be a set, a function. D from x cross x to r is said to be a metric or distance on x if one d x y scatter equal to zero for all x y in x and the x y equal to zero if and only if x equal to y third thing is d x y is equal to d y x fourth one d x z is lesser equal to d x y plus d y z for all x y z in r in 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 x and the the space x d is called a matrix space So our first thing is we look at X as Rn and D, D X Y or D A B the distance is norm of A minus B, right? So first thing is Rn comma D is a metric space. Well, that is very very simple. So we know this d of no d of d of a b. So proof is very easy. D of a b, which is norm of a minus b, which is greater equal to zero, that you know, and it is also clear d of a b equal to zero, which means norm of a b equal to zero, and you see by this is by property of the inner product, this is A equal to B. And then the, the, the symmetry D of B A, which is B minus A norm, this is similar to same as A minus B, nothing changes. So which is D of A B. Right, so this is, this is, no negativity. Uh, let's this is called positive definiteness. Positivity. This is symmetry. And this is triangle inequality. All right. So symmetry is done. Uh, so triangle inequality, so D of AC, which is norm of A minus C, this is nothing but A minus B plus B minus C, 
and now use triangle inequality for Rn is a minus b plus norm of b minus a, b minus c. So you see here in the last part we used, so here we used the triangle inequality for vectors. So you can view each each point in Rn as vector as well. So whenever we need, whatever we need to view, we will we'll view that way. All right. So then you, you, you come back here. So this is D of AB plus D of BC. So that implies uh, Rn with D is a matrix space. The important property is that in a matrix space, one can define you know, what is called open set. But in our case, the matrix space will not go with matrix space. Those who are interested can go with the matrix space, but we'll, we'll generally use what is in Rn. So the notion of open, closed, compact sets. All right. So firstly, epsilon neighborhood. So in R, epsilon neighborhood was an epsilon neighborhood of a point A was a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon. All right. So you want to find an analog of of this of this interval. What would be the right analog? Right. So definition. For any epsilon greater than zero, the set. B A epsilon. This is defined as X belongs to R N such that D A X less than delta. This is which means norm of A minus X less than delta. Okay. So this is called the open, oh sorry, this is epsilon, the open ball centered at A, which lies in Rn, and radius epsilon greater than zero. So this this ball this ball is also called epsilon neighborhood of A. So in R we had like picture like this. Let's say this is the point A and you have this A minus epsilon. A plus epsilon. So in Rn, let's see, let me draw in R3. Or let's see, let me draw in R2 first. In R2, take a point. Take a point A, A comma B. So this. So this is the point A comma B, or maybe A one comma A two, as we have A one comma A two, 
and this is epsilon. So this set is a neighborhood, right? And in R3, in R3, consider point is A1, A2, A3, A1, A2, A3. And you consider a sphere. with center at that point. So this is this is epsilon. Okay. So this is this is open ball. Open ball. So the inside set inside ball. R3 standard open ball. So depending on the metric, the ball will change. This is standard open ball in R2. This is this is also called open disk. Disk. It's centered at a radius epsilon. Okay, any question till now? Any question? Okay, let me define open set. A subset, a set U, which is subset of Rn, is said to be open if for every point P in U there exists epsilon greater than zero such that the ball centered at P. Radius epsilon lies in U. So you might have this kind of set in R2. So for every point, what you have, you have what you need is, is a small. What you need is a small disk. So this is this is the point P, and this is epsilon. All right. Similarly, it, it happens for every point. So what would be what would be this kind of thing? So you look at the distance from from the boundary and make it make it half, and look at this ball. That will automatically do for every point. You see, this is an interesting idea. So this one, look at the distance, distance of the point from the boundary well. If it is bounded, uh, well, well, we don't need it to, to, to be bounded, but it has to be finite. Uh, then distance, let's say distance d, then 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 consider from the point p. Let's say consider the ball. P, P, D by 2. All right? Is this correct?
Okay, so you know open set. Can you give an give an example of an open set in R three? Yeah, I think the product of any open sets. Product of what product? Like zero comma one cross zero comma one. So zero comma one cross zero comma one cross zero comma one. Hmm. Right. So this is what is this? This is a cube, right? Open cube. Yeah. Right, so this is also an open set. So you can try to try drawing that picture. So zero comma one here. Go one year. One year. One year. One year. Right, so this is this open open box. This is open in R three. Yeah. How do you show? How do you show this is open? Uh, given any point inside it, uh, consider the distance between uh, the six. Surfaces take the minimum of that distance divided by two and mm -hmm. take the ball. Right, good. So that that is that is this is the idea. So the point is you need to. Uh, the problem is that you need to find the distance d. So that may not be always achievable. But this is achievable, but you might not the find the right point where the distance occurs. So what do you need to look at? Uh, look at the distance. Uh, which is a, is a number which is smaller than the distance. If you know smaller than the distance, then it will work automatically, right? So if you don't find the distance, if you know any number, positive number, which is smaller than num uh, smaller than, than this d, then this d by 2 will also work. So here you, will, you have six sides. You just look at the distance from each, 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 each plane. Now you know the distance between each point, a plane, point and a plane, and you divide by two and look at uh, look at the ball centered up at, at any point and radius the distance by two. So this is open. Yeah, somebody else, another example. X squared plus y squared plus Unbounded. x squared less than open one. Balls are open sets. X squared plus y squared plus x squared less than one. The set of all x, y, z, 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 z square plus z square less than, less than one. one, right? The set of all points. Yeah, this is right, right. So this is this is nothing but the standard open ball, right? Open ball of radius one. This should be open. So this same ball works for everybody, for every point. Now, how do you prove this is open? Same ball will not work. How do you prove this is open? So we can take a point in the ball, which is, uh, yeah. say, at a distance uh, d from the uh, center. Okay. Then we can show that uh, uh, the sphere centered around that point of radius 1 minus d lies inside the sphere by triangle inequality, and this will be done. Right. So basically, what you are trying to show is, is you look at any point and find the distance from the from the sphere, surface sphere. Okay. Now, how do you find this this one? You generally you look at the line through the center. Right. So yeah, it, it will go something like this. Yeah, not not that point. Look at the line through this point, and it it whatever wherever it hits. So you know this is this is the radius one, right? 
and this this line is is perpendicular to to the sphere that part you know perhaps i'm not sure this you know or not but this along this line you can achieve the distance so this is an interesting question along which line one one can achieve the distance so in this case it is this radial line which is actually can achieve the distance so here if it is this 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 is this is let's say uh, d then this one minus d would, would be would be the distance here and then you have to make you have to you have to do some this by two actually uh, no it's it actually works so distance so uh, this one will do it so this is so smooth, it's so nice that the distance d1 minus d, if you look at, uh, look at, look at the centered at the point P and radius 1 minus d, it's 1 minus d, then it works. All right. Yeah, somebody said another example. Right, I missed that. What was that example? Yeah, somebody said another example while I was writing that. What was that example? So can you give the unbounded open set? So which, which actually uh, goes infinity, not bounded? Rn is open in Rn. Yeah, so Rn is open in Rn. Rn, any ball, any ball of any radius work at any, any point, but now an unbounded set which is not rn like the same cube that we consider uh, like uh, open zero one cross open zero one cross r right right that one can do so the point is geometrically you can think of if you look at the quadrants so you can look at any of the quadrants so this is x greater than zero y greater than zero z greater than zero is an open set right or you you can remove one of the restriction let's say it can be anything that is also an open set right so it is like it is as you said like this a to b well a less than b cross a to b because let's say R, R, or you can say this zero to infinity cross zero to infinity cross zero to infinity. Yeah. Similarly, so in, in fact, you can look at yeah, 0 to infinity cross 0 to infinity cross r and you can actually give you can you can put r in any of the any any of the thing not just you can put r here or you can put r here you can put any open set any open interval that side no problem all right uh, sir. and uh, so yes. is it okay to say that if we take any figure in Rn and remove its boundary, then it will be an open set? Just any random figure? Uh, uh, well, the point is, uh, what do you mean? What is the definition of figure, right? Uh, uh, how can I define it? Uh, yeah. Let's say we are in R3 
and yes. uh, we consider the set of all points x y z uh, okay okay now i don't know how i can define it here mm, so that is a problem so yeah. that's that's the problem with the shape so you, you trigger shapes and these things are actually uh, nice uh, objects but you don't have a precise definition how do we define but, a figure? Yeah. Uh, well, you, you 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 cannot define a figure. Something like that. A figure is has no definition. It generally it generally says there is something, some object. Right. The point is, uh, well, if you look at a geometric shapes rather, for example, a tetrahedron, a triangle, a, a tra yeah, tetrahedron, or a parallelopiped, or any polygonal shape right mm -hmm. and then you remove the boundary that will be an open set okay that will be an open set okay and, and then of course you need you need to know the definition of boundary as well for polygonal polygonal shapes you, you just have sides mm. it's a planar looks like plane mm. so there it is it is easy to say that you can just remove the Sides for for example a, a, a parallel pipet, something like this. Or maybe uh, my drawing is not that good, but let me try. Well, it it doesn't have to be parallel pipet. Just, uh, yeah, one has to. It can be any quadrilateral, or rather, each each side should be uh, quadrilateral shaped. That would be good enough. Right. So here, if you look at the inside and remove the sides, each of the sides, it's an open open set okay but in general you one need a definition of uh, what is called figure and what is called boundary so boundary has a, has a precise definition which which maybe you will see later uh, but here yeah, we'll we'll also define what is called boundary gradually yeah maybe in the next class or so yeah so let me put another definition before we uh, stop so definition let's set set f in rn is said to be closed if if the complement rn minus f is open right so this is this is another it, this this is a definition we will see another characterization of closed set in terms of limit points uh, but this one has actually once you know this one you have a lot of examples right you you have, you have looked at several open sets just remove the uh, open sets and you'll get this it's it's actually uh, in the open set so uh, you'll get a closed set so the point is example so look at the complement of the above examples open sets right now it's set theory that it will be the complement of a complement is the same open set so you will have a lot of examples you have the examples of closed set now you see closed uh, so so this is one this is two Check that closed interval 
evil is close set so what do you know what you need to show is uh, you need to show that the complement of this set is open all right so 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 exercise is give reason okay okay so this is this is all for today so we'll meet you again on monday all right if you have any question you can ask now in two three minutes Okay, all right, so let me look.